Well, first, uh, I was, uh, it was the theme, if I were to live here, and to give some thought to that. And then thereafter, trying to come up with an ideal that would represent that in a, in a social manner, in which I do a lot of social commentary, political art in the United States. And I wanted to reflect that in my art because I understood the struggles of the uh, indigenous people here in uh, New Zealand. And so in that context, I began to look for images and ideas on the internet and, and discussing with friends and associates that I knew here previously. And I came, uh, found the, uh, the twist symbol which had a very uh, rich uh, meaning to it. And so I wanted to interpret that. What I was attempting to do was to use that symbol in its meaning of uh, unity, uh, the spiritual uh, meaning that it has, as well as the uh, social meaning that it has. People uh, traveling different ways, but always coming back uh, to meet again. And so in that, I wanted to uh, make it an image that would reflect that, but have more substance to it in a way that visual substance and from where I'm coming from in my artwork. So that is why I chose to use the twist symbol and the Maori flag in the symbol itself. And the uh, overcoming oppression is our path to unity. Also to um, have it interpreted into a Maori language out of respect to the Maori here in and the folks who are here in uh, New Zealand. It was very clear to me that Emery's visit to New Zealand had had a particular impact on him, that, um, that it had been a particular journey. So I was very excited when, through Howen Roo, we were asked to collaborate. But since I had not been specifically here, then I took this year as being the planet and this kind of a global consciousness. Um, so my perspective of New Zealand was almost from space, from outer space, as it were, you know. So I did some research and that voting in the United Nations um, was a kind of a point of entry to, um, to reflect on what it would be like if I were to live here. Um, when it went to vote, an overwhelming majority of nations voted for it. A few nations abstained, and even fewer nations voted against it. And these four nations that voted against it were all part of the Anglo-Saxon Commonwealth, um, Canada, United States, New Zealand, and Australia. And um, I had never heard of New Zealand standing out so much in the context of the family of nations, you know. So I thought it might be interesting to present that fact to the people in New Zealand and see how they might reflect on that. So as an outs it's like an outsider presenting information about a situation that's very familiar, but maybe you can gain a, an aspect of unfamiliarity because it's viewed by the perspective of, of an outsider. A lot of it happened via emails and internet and with the guys abroad you know they were not only in San Francisco but they were in Sweden and you know stuff so it was tough in that sense but Rigo actually first enlightened me to that declaration and that got me going and the minute I looked on the internet regarding the declaration to read up about it and to be truthful I was shocked that it took us that long to sign it you know I mean now you know um, we kind of pride us. We try to pride ourselves publicly on, you know, the treatment of Indigenous people. And so, so that set the precedence for me. And with the graphic sensibility and graphic training, all these flags kept coming up. You know, the, the UN flag and these flags of peace and these American flags. And so I thought about breaking it down and telling a different story. So I took the colours of like the UN. I took the colours of the the uh, American flag and I basically recreated almost new sections and new flags like the UN flag with the, with the American stars on it, the, the, the US stripes that led into that ABC which are kind of a, a thing for the three of us really and about process and about A and B and C happening. So mine's full of sort of these little visual sort of little bits of stories you know like trying to link the two but you know the two things so I, I pulled on Rigo's idea and those, that historic side of things so I, I, I took from that and he set that foundation going and then I tried to look at what he was saying kind of the now 
and then slightly bleed into the, the future for Emery, which Emery looks was very much looking forward and, and this, this lovely, you know, overcoming pressure and looking forward and these beautiful sort of almost like rays of light for me. They, they, were, they were really, really special. So I grounded a little bit with what I know and where I'm from, you know, mum being Māori and father being European, so we, we got a massive thing to the land, which was being said the other day, you know, tangata whenua and the idea of land. And uh, so right at the bottom I have the idea of the land, which is grounding us, and then the bones are a symbol of the fact that we all return to the land. It, it's been, you know, a sincere highlight for me to, to work with guys of not only this calibre, but this knowledge and stuff. So, and they suggested really early on, which I, I thought was lovely, about being the central point and then flanking, and without them even kind of realising it, it, it kind of fit as a co-pop in it. Painting on walls, yeah, it, maybe it's the oldest human gesture that remains on record, painting on caves with the fire stick. So it's a very long tradition, but what particularly attracts me is that a mural can be painted by one person, or many, can be uh, made possible by one person, a funder, but it really doesn't belong to anyone. You know, it belongs to whoever sees it. So this, I find it a very um, democratic way of reaching many.